good morning everybody. Uh, I started in lifts in 1968 and uh, I was involved with Ward Leonard systems, you may remember them and there's still a few around and got interested in calculations and then got interested in simulations. So around about 1972 I was interested in calculations and simulations and I became uh, interested in ha being able to close the loop between what a calculation told you and what a simulation told you. So today we're, we're, I'm going to be talking about simulations and how what you might, might be able to trust them or not. Jan is going to come along and he's going to be looking at the hypothesis of whether you get the same answers from calculations and simulations. So we have some joined up uh, presentations here and Lutf is going to come along with, with some alternatives. Um, unfortunately you don't have the paper in front of you. Uh, on previous years you've always had a book, now you have to download the PDF which is good, but you have, probably haven't done it yet. I'm going to, I made this presentation on the basis that you would have some of the information in front of you and therefore you're going to perhaps have to go and look at that uh, later on. So in lift traffic design we've got uh, two methods, calculation and simulation. Uh, calculation is, is quite quick. Uh, and by experience seems to be able to produce suitable performances. Simulation is slower and provides what I call ephemeral data. Some, you know, some of it you might believe and some of it you might not. Peters, you may have heard of him, it says it's good practice to start all design exercise with a round trip time calculation. And that, that's coming in uh, Guide D2020. Uh, which will be available next year. As technical editor, I know some of the stuff that's going to go in there. When we're doing uh, traffic design by calculation, what we're trying to do is to match the ability of the lift installation's uh, handling capacity with the passenger demand. We, we want it to be equal or a bit better. And to do that, we've got that equation there, which gives us the handling capacity of the lift system, and if we know what the value, of the number of people we've got in the car and the number of lifts we are going to put into an installation, we can then start to design the lift system to see whether it's going to meet that demand. There's a picture of a round trip um, when a lift starts off at the uh, main terminal floor, closes its doors, goes around the building, dropping off passengers, eventually reaches the highest floor, goes back again to the main terminal. And some of that may, may very well be covered by what Jan is going to present uh, later. The round trip time equation uh, does follow the, the standards of ethos that uh, all standards should be verifiable, repeatable, reproducible and transparent. And if you look in the, in the, in the written paper you'll see some examples of, of what those terms mean. With, with the round trip uh, equation, you, you know its derivation. You may not agree with the derivations, but you know what it is, so it, it is, it's verifiable. You can repeat it endlessly. If I ask you to work out the speed of a lift, if I give you a distance and a time, you can work out the speed. And you can keep doing the same numbers and you get the same answer. And if somebody else does it, they get the same answer. So it's repeatable and reproducible by everybody when you're doing a calculation. It's also transparent in that you can see the equations that un underline it, underlie it. Now, you, now you, you wouldn't use a, a paper and pencil these days to do the calculation. You wouldn't use a handheld calculator or anything like that. What, what you would do is you would stick it on a, on a spreadsheet, something like this one and you, you have all your data going in here, this is all your input data and this is all, all your output data. Uh, difficult to see from where you're sitting so I've done a, a close-up here where I've hidden all the, uh, the rows and columns just to, so you can see the straightforward thing. In the, in the uh, simulation example I'm going to come to, a 2,000 kilogram car was uh, decided to have and there were going to be six of them they're going at a particular speed with all the dynamics of doors and so forth. And this, this calculation that you see on there now says, right, uh, we can get 16 people on average in there, maximum of 20. We've got six lifts. 
what, what will we get as the handling capacity? And you can see that the, the percentage is 14.3. In the design that we're going to look at in a moment or two, we want 12%. So the, the, the point about having a calculation like this is that you can change it quickly. For instance, that's an overlifted uh, system. If you wanted 12%, you got 14.3. So if you wanted to say, well, let's see what happens if we only have five lifts. Well, if you only have five lifts of the same size, same characteristics, we actually get 11.9% we get a, a, an interval of 32.8 and we might, might want, to, want to have an interval of less than 30 so then you start to decide whether you, this five lifts of that size would do the job even though it doesn't meet perhaps the design criteria that you, you set out. And you can see that the answers come extremely quickly. Now traffic design by uh, simulation uh, uh, ca traffic calculation is, is, calculations are limited in what they can actually present in, in terms of answers. They can give you things like intervals and the handling capacity of course, but they can't present things like the journey times, the queue lengths, the percentile values, the energy consumption, that, that sort of thing. You need to be able to do that by a simulator. Uh, uh, for for those reasons, you would use a simulator. Now, is a simulator, a simulation, does it meet the criteria that you would have on, on a standard? Is it verifiable, transparent, repeatable, and reproducible? And this is the question that I was asking myself, and it, it, was, made, it was made possible to do a check on this because there's a number of us in the room here today who uh, have been working on the TC178, it's an ISO committee, WG6, with a subgroup five, to revise the 1984 ISO standard uh, 4190-6, uh, which looked at passenger lifts installed in residential buildings, planning and selection, and probably loads of you have never heard of this one. You'll have heard of some of the other uh, 4190s, the ones, one, two, for instance, that give you dimensions, but probably never looked at this one. 1984, 30 odd years ago, so it's very much out of date. And so the ISO committee decided that it wanted to uh, upgrade this um, standard, revise it, and it wanted to introduce offices and hotels into the uh, orbit of, of this particular standard, not restrict it just to residential buildings. It uh, started off as a revision of 4196 and now has become renumbered in the ISO range 8100-32. It's been out for a draft international standard, it's been out as a final draft international standard and it will be published sometime next year, hopefully early next year. And so some of the information that is presented here is in the public domain, it's in either the DIS or the FDIS and is available for you to look at. So the opportunity came with a group of expert specialists who formed the uh, subgroup to actually check whether one could get consistent answers from simulation as opposed to the consistent answers that you can get from calculation. And so the task that was set was to ask some of the members of the group to run a simulation against a fixed set of data. And in, if you had the paper in front of you, you would be able to see the fixed set of data, which is six 2,000 kilogram cars running at particular speeds. It w it also, it was decided to have a look at the up peak, a pure up peak, to see if it related to calculation. And it was decided to look at lunchtime period as well, because that is not an easy thing to do with calculation. It was decided to try and uh, ma match the design criteria that this standard proposes. It proposes a 12% with up peak handling capacity, at least that, with um, average waiting times less than 30, sec 30 seconds. It looks at the lunchtime one with similar uh, demands of 11% and 40 seconds. And so there are some design criteria there and uh, the intention is to run simulations against the input data 
and see if those basic output data come out from the simulators in the same way. Are they all going to be consistent? Are they repeatable, reproducible, etc.? Uh, the, ta the, the, the table one in the paper tells you the design criteria. Table two in the, in the paper talks about the, the data that you put in. There are two tables uh, that in the paper which give you the results. Six sets of results were obtained from this uh, specialist expert group. Uh, they were sent to me and anonymized. I, I'm, I'm the only one that knows who did everything. Obviously, me and the individual investigators will recognize their own results, but uh, uh, they're anonymized so that we don't have a league table of who simulators the best or the one that we would prefer to use. And so they're just identified in the literature here as series one through to series six. Each um, series consists of nine simulations. The ISO process in Dash 32 is to pick your design criteria, in this case for up peak 12%, and to test it by changing the de design criteria in 1% steps down and up. And the chosen range for this particular uh, test was to go from 8% demand to 16% demand going through to 12% in the case of uppeak and 11% in the case of, of the lunch time. So there's nine simulations carried out. Uh, there's 36 in, in total and uh, most people do 10 simulations and average out the results. So we've got something like 300 simulations going on with these six investigators. So statistically, we've got a fairly good um, analysis going on. Eventually what we had was results from three major manufacturers, three consultants, using three different software platforms, so a nice range there. And four sets of the results were made using the same platform, and one individual did two of the simulations on two different simulators. So quite a range of tests there, which we were unique in being able to have because the, we had this subgroup available with the experts there. So it's an ideal opportunity which I've been waiting for since 1972. So it takes time takes, ta takes its toll on these things. There's the results. I'm going to blow them up a little bit uh, more for you. Uh, the colored light, the, the series one through to series six, are the six sets of results. And some of you will, uh, in the room will recognize your results. Um, uh, uh, other people uh, not in the room will recognize their results, and only I know which ones are which. And you can see here that we have uh, low-rise building, high-rise building. This is up peak, this is midday. So we've got four sets of results. And you can see that the results don't lie on top of one another. With a calculation, they would do, but the results that you see there uh, don't lay on top of one another. They, they change around quite a bit. You, you will see in, in the up peak, this is a pure up peak uh, simulations here. You can see that this is the, the demand that we really want, 12%. That's what we want to design the lift system for. And you will see here the average waiting times. And you can see that they are quite small average waiting times. So at 12%, it would look as though this lift system is doing very well, whether it's a low rise one or a high rise one. In the case of midday traffic, we were looking at an 11% demand in both cases. And a 40 second, this line here represents the criteria, 40 seconds, you can see again that uh, the, all the simulations produce good results. So if you get, you're getting good results from, the sa from different simulations, but you'll notice that <coughs> as the number of, as the demand increases up towards 16%, we're starting to run into saturation and not be able to hand, handle the traffic demands. 
So if we were to look at that in more detail, we can see just for this one graph, this is the up peak, low rise. You can see with, at our 12%, we're well below the, the, the 30 second design criteria. But as we move up, we can see that the, the, the numbers go up, up in enormously. Looking at it a little bit more closely, then we can see here our demand is 12%. We can see our design interval is 30 seconds and we see the increase in demand. If you do a calculation, as I showed you earlier on, for this particular configuration that you've chosen of six 2,000 kilogram cars, it actually has a handling capacity of 14.3%, not 12%. So this system is overlifted. And if you look at that little, little uh, cross there, that is the calculated value for this particular system, which is giving us 14.3% uh, um, handling capacity with an average interval, which has been calculated, estimated at 23 seconds. And you can see that all but one of these simulators are giving a, a reasonably uh, consistent result. Uh, again, with the low rise, uh, we wanted an 11% design criteria and a 40 second, and it gets that easily. But as the demand increases, not as bad as in the up peak case, as it increases, we gradually get closer and closer to the 40 second uh, criteria. So why are the results different? <coughs> Well, there were many possibilities for that. Each of the investigators had to set up their simulation. And when you use a simulator, as, as some of you have done, you're asked to make certain decisions as to how you deal with dwell times, the number of recycles, and the doors, and so on and so forth. There's lots of parameters in each of the simulators that you can alter. And you have to make a decision what you want those parameters to be. You also are simulating inside this simulator engine, you're simulating the, the, the traffic controller. The traffic control in this case was a full collective control, a simple full collective control. But if I say full collective control to a number of you, you you'll have different descriptions of what you expect it to do. And each, each simulation program had a different description probably uh, of how, the sim how it represents a collective control system. There's also all sorts of things that happen inside the simulator, uh, which uh, you don't necessarily know about, decisions that are made uh, as to rounding numbers, averaging out, are you averaging over a whole window, are you dealing with end effects properly and so on. Those things are unknown to you. And also, how are the output results presented? Is, is, again, is, is, the way, is the way in which the output results done by a moving window, a, a constant window, an average, or whatever. There's a whole stack of information inside that engine, in the simulation engine, that you don't know about. And I think we have shown, by doing those simulations, that those unknowns have given the variations of, of, of the results. In general, if you compare the, the, the results when you're able to see them in graphical form, uh, ser all set series five follow a similar set shape uh, for the up-peak traffic and follow the, a similar shape for the midday traffic. The reason why sim se series five is different <coughs> is that, that those simulations were carried out by somebody who wasn't part of the group. They weren't uh, a familiar with the, the thinking <coughs> that the group had for doing simulations. And you can see that when you give somebody the same information, cold, and ask them to simulate it without the sort of background knowledge, then you get a, a completely wild answer there. The right-hand graph shows a smaller time range. The performance in terms of average waiting time for demand of 12% in the up peak, except series five, and 11% in the midday are both 
easily achieved. The use of six, uh, two, uh, six tw 2,000 kilogram lifts provide an over-lifted installation. That was what people thought they should, should have a look at for this particular requirement. The calculation for the low rise, if you do a calculation, indicate that you got 14.3% when you were asking for 12 and for the uh, high rise 13.6. By calculation you can see the, the comparative values for five lifts and six lifts so you've got alternative options there which you can discover by uh, carrying out the calculations. Uh, Peter's remarks in guide D2020 when you get it, simulation is complex and it's easy for less experienced practitioners to make mistakes and a round trip time calculation may alert the practitioner to the possible error. And that means that you would probably have simulated, if you'd have thought about it more carefully, five 2,000 kilogram lifts or six 1,350 kilogram lifts rather than six 2,000 kilogram lifts. So this, this sl uh, slide just gives you the comparisons close up around the 12% and going on through into saturation. So is simulation verifiable, transparent, repeatable and reproducible? Well the ISO test showed that it's repeatable by the same individual using the same in input data using the same simulator, you would expect that, but it would not be reproducible by the same individual using a different simulator and we actually did check that in, one, in uh, uh, a couple of cases there. Uh, would, it would not be reproducible by a different individual using a different simulator. I think the, the variations in the results I've shown you show that. And of course you don't know the internal workings of the simulator e engine. It's not transparent and verifiable to you. Like a spreadsheet you can look at the equations and if there's a mistake there you can get it corrected. So in conclusion Calculation method does fulfill those four requirements and also calculations can deal with more than just up peak, it can deal with basements, double deck and so on, making more and more alarming assumptions to be able to get the calculations to work. The simulation method is not verifiable, transparent or reproducible but it is repeatable. People say, well can the simulators be made more verifiable? Yes, they could if you were to be more demanding on defining the parameters that they were going to simulate. But uh, just as uh, we have defeat algorithms on fuel consumption by certain manufacturers, then it would be possible for uh, the simulator to suffer the same consequences. So the answer is I don't, it's impossible to get them all to, to line up. 